Hey guys, Darth Maud here today to chat all things canon. No, you don't need to be fluent in over six million languages. I'm just gonna fill you in as simply as possible. So even if you're not a huge Star Wars fan, you may have heard the word canon being thrown around a lot lately. Is this canon? What is canon? There's new Star Wars canon. Is that now canon? Oh wow, that's totally going to canon the canon's canon in the firing canon. So what the actual jab of the heart is canon? In simplest terms, canon just means official. So out of all the characters, storylines and plots that happened in everything Star Wars, this is what is actually true and happened in the Star Wars universe. You see, when Star Wars first came out in 1977, it spurted a bunch of novels, spin-offs, cartoons, games, and for nearly four decades they expanded and delved into the lives of Luke Skywalker, Princess Leia, Han Solo, Darth Vader, and beyond. Way beyond. The stories didn't stop when the movies did. You read about what happened years down the track once Leia and Han wed and had kids. Oh yeah, they bred. You even learnt all about the Old Republic, which was thousands of years earlier. They called these stories Expanded Universe, which you may see be written like this. And within this, we came across notable deaths, like Chewbacca, who died because a moon fell on him. And incredible storylines where the right hand of the Emperor, Mara Jade, defied her boss's orders to kill Luke Skywalker and instead married him. They had kids too. They're all just in space, just <clears throat> and because there were many different authors tackling many different timelines and story arcs told in such rapid succession, it became so unruly it would often overlap and contradict itself. So to help with these layers of canon and to identify what was what, they divided it all up into different types and subsequently they had different names. And they are G canon. Now the G standing for George as in Lucas. This is all of his six movies and novelizations of the film, the script and any material that directly comes from Lucas. This is the boss canon. This is the foundation. So the story here is what everything builds from. Then there's T canon, which was later announced when the television show The Clone Wars happened in 2008. Now the Clone Wars movie also existed, and it too is canon. But T canon is specifically for television. Then there's C canon, which is continuity canon. This is all the books and comics that came out after the movies and before the TV shows. So basically, what expanded universe is. Then there's S canon, which stands for secondary canon, which is older and less accurate expanded universe work that was often overwritten by the main continuity of work within the upper echelon like the G and the C canon. Think Star Tours attractions and many video games because they fall into that. And there's N canon, which also means non-canon or non-continuity material. This is the only level that everything in it strictly does not apply to canon. This is fan fiction, what if stories, theories, Lego Star Wars, those types of things. So yeah, it's kind of like color coding your wardrobe. There's still a shit ton of clothes in there. Now they're just a little bit more organized. But that all changed when Disney bought Lucasfilm for $4 billion in October 2012 because they made the decision to wipe the slate Clean. They stated that the only thing to remain canon from then on were the six Star Wars movies, the G canon, and the Clone Wars series, T canon. The rest that fell into the expanded universe were no longer a part of the official story of Star Wars and was to be called Legends. Diehards were pretty cut up about this, and rightfully so, because all of these extended characters and stories that included the lives of their heroes, the history of the Jedi, the birth and the end of the lore was now not included, and from here on it could be altered, adapted, or vanish altogether. Disney wanted to start again. That's not to say that they won't actually borrow or even keep any of these characters, story arcs or developments from Legends, but it does mean that Leia doesn't necessarily marry or even stay with Han or that their kids exist anymore. From now on, at this moment, the only thing canon is called the new canon. And I'll let you know what's in it officially from now. So keep your eyes peeled in this list because for those of you who are asking, hey, I'm new to Star Wars, where should I start? The answer that you see will be somewhere in this list. And that's depending if you're after movies, TV shows or comics, books or all of it. Unlimited power. So we're According to Disney, new canon includes the main series, so any of the movies with episode in front of it. That's the original trilogy, Episode 4, A New Hope, Episode 5, Empire Strikes Back, and Episode 6, Return of the Jedi, and the prequels, which is Episode 1, The Phantom Menace, Episode 2, Attack of the Clones, and Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith. That's optional viewing, of course. But if you do ask me and you've never seen the movie, start with the original trilogy and go with the prequels as you see fit. Then there's the anthology series. Now this is new, and the first movie of anthology is Rogue One, which won't be hitting cinemas until December 16th next year. Other movies in the anthology are being made and will be released in between the episodes. Then there are the TV shows, The Clone Wars and Rebels. The Clone Wars take place between the Attack of the Clones and Revenge of the Sith, following Anakin Skywalker, who's fighting in The Clone Wars alongside Master Obi-Wan Kenobi and his Padawan Ahsoka Tano. If you're watching it from Series 1 Ep 1, the series is actually out of chronological order, so if you're going to watch these from the start, I actually recommend Googling the actual chronological order so that it makes sense when watching them instead of the storyline 
storyline jumping all over the place. Rebels is the newest series that debuted last year, which sees a new team of rebel misfits band together, led by the last Padawan, Kanan, to take down the Empire leading up to the events of A New Hope. On top of this is every post-2014 Marvel Star Wars comic, including the issue of Star Wars, focusing on Han, Leia and Luke on the events that take place between A New Hope and Empire Strikes Back, Darth Vader, which is in that same timeline where Darth Vader is in a spot of trouble because, you know, the Death Star kind of blew up, and Kanan, the last Padawan, showing what happened after Order 66 was issued, and that's the command to take down all Jedis. Except he survives it. These issues are all recurring for now. There's also a six-issue run of Leia, focusing on finding and uniting all of the people of Alderaan who were not on the planet when it, you know, what, too soon? And of Lando in his journey in becoming the Baron of Cloud City with his sidekick Lobot. You know, this guy. Also in canon is every post-2014 video game, starting with Star Wars Battlefront. And then there's every post-2014 book, kicking off with A New Dawn, in a bid to delve into the background of Kanan and Hera, the prominent characters in Rebels before that show was launched. From there, there's been Tarkin, a book all about the life of Grand Moff Tarkin who ran the first Death Star. Rest in peace. Spoilers. Heir to the Jedi, told in Luke's point of view between A New Hope and Empire Strikes Back. Lords of the Sith, about Vader and the Emperor kicking ass. And Dark Disciple, based on the unmade episodes of The Clone Wars that were never aired. And there will be over 20 more books to be released before December, so that everyone, either a new fan or old, is completely caught up in time for Episode 7, The Force Awakens. Whew. So how was that? Not too painful, I hope? So the lesson here is that even though Disney has wiped the slate completely clean of the expanded content and just kept the basics down, there is going to be so much more content happening in movies, shows, comics, and books. This is a new era, people. So whether you're a Jedi, Sith, or a little bish, Star Wars is here. Is there too much? Eh, maybe. But you can be sure that I'm all in it, like Boba Fett in a Sarlacc pit. Like Max Rebo and his drums. So what's been your favourite so far? Do you read the books? Are you more into comics? Have you even seen the movies? Are you excited for what's to come? Are you scared of oversaturation? Am I asking too many questions? You know what, just comment below. And don't forget, you can suggest topics for my next Star Wars 101. May the source be with you. I'm Maud. The weapon used exclusively by Force users, both Jedi and Sith alike, is said to be an elegant weapon of a more civilized age. And, in essence, is a laser sword, in which the hilt projects a blade made of pure energy. Now, it's used in close range combat, acting as both a sword to attack and a shield to deflect and even redirect blaster bolts being fired. This is why the lightsaber is only used by those wielding the power of the Force.